Hi everyone, I'm Jim White, and this video is about the science of heat sinking. Uh, that's where we use heat sinks to keep uh, components within their temperature rating. Here is a variety of types of heat sinks. They are used to keep components like the one shown here within their allowed temperature range. We need to start with a little physics in order to understand heat flow. So uh, here's physics gym uh, to uh, start us off. Let me start by saying the only true sink in nature is a black hole. But when we're talking about uh, heat sinks, uh, it's similar to uh, talking about resistance. We have electrical resistance and we have thermal resistance. Electrical resistance is E over I or volts over amps and we call that an ohm and designate it with this symbol. In uh, the thermal world uh, the thermal resistance is T over W and that's temperature over watts and there's no special name for it or symbol. So uh, that's about it. So back to engineering, Jim. Well, I don't think that uh, really helped too much. Uh, let me try and explain it a little differently. Uh, for the re electrical resistance, uh, we're used to seeing this, but this is really always it's delta E. We have a voltmeter here. We're always measuring a voltage between two points. So that's a delta voltage. And the same is true here. This is a delta temperature and it's usually uh, given in kelvins or degree C. So let's rewrite this. It's sometimes called kelvins per watt that we can call it delta degree C per watt. So uh, this is always assumed delta, but we don't say it or often we don't even think about it. But we're measuring a voltage between two points. For a thermal resistance, we're measuring a temperature between two points. In an uh, electrical uh, conductor, let's say we have a piece of wire, it's rectangular in cross-section, and uh, we have a cross-sectional area, and we have a, uh, a length. We know that the longer the wire is, the more resistance it'll have, and we know the bigger the area the cross-sectional area of the conductor is the lower the resistance will be. Now for a given voltage between the ends we'll have a given current flow. So that's a flow. Current is electrons per second. So this Delta voltage causes a flow of electrons. Now, electrons move very fast, so uh, we don't uh, have a time lag that we can normally measure. Now, if we look at a thermal conductor, 
let's make it look similar. In this case, we have a temperature here and a temperature here. Perhaps heat's being applied to one end of this. Uh, could be an aluminum bar or a copper bar. And again, the longer this thing is, the more the thermal resistance, uh, the less heat will flow from one end to the other. And uh, the bigger the area, the more heat will flow. And uh, heat is energy, and energy is equal to joules, which is equal to watt seconds. A watt second is one joule. So the bigger the temperature differential, the more heat that will be flowing. So the heat flow per second, that's per second, the seconds cancel and we have watts flowing. So the temperature differential drives the heat and the heat flow is actually watts. Now this is a slow process due to the mass of the uh, thermal conductor. And uh, in normal situations, uh, when we're talking about thermal flow, we have big areas and very short lengths. So sometimes uh, it will be referred to as thickness rather than length. But the, it's still an area. So uh, the electron flow happens instantly, but heat flow takes time. Heat sinks are uh, intended to conduct heat from a component to the environment through convection and or radiation. Uh, here's a resistor and a transistor in a TO220 package. And these heat sinks here are all designed for a TO220 package to be mounted to it. So the ratings of these heat sinks given in uh, degree C per watt, that temperature where the degree C are measured is where the device is mounted to the heat sink. And the lower the uh, degree C per watt, the larger and more expensive the heat sink will be. Now here's a, another specialty heat sink made for TO3 transistors. So the degree C per watt is measured where the devices are mounted. Now there's uh, many times it would not be convenient to use a, a typical manufactured heat sink. And uh, here's a case of a homemade heat sink. And uh, for some projects uh, that might be mounted in a metallic enclosure, uh, the enclosure itself can be used as a heat sink. Heat sink uh, performance data is usually done with a curve similar to this. Uh, this is the watts dissipated by the device on the heat sink, and this is the rise above the ambient temperature. So in a 22 degree C room, uh, this is actually 22 degrees as your starting point. So all of the uh, heat sink data is usually uh, relative to a rise above the ambient temperature. And in that way you can always add 
to the ambient temperature. If you're in a 50 degree C ambient, you just add to your original data. So, typically we'll have a curve presented uh, that is something like this. I've exaggerated this curvature, but uh, at 4 watts and 60 degrees, that's 15 degrees C per watt. But as we get the heat sink to a higher and higher temperature, it radiates more and more. So it's not only convection, but radiation takes effect and we'll get a lower degree C per watt. So uh, it, how, what temperature regime you're going to run in uh, affects what the actual degree C per watt is. Now also on their data sheet you may find some other curves and that's uh, feet per minute of airflow. So with airflow you can of course cool uh, much better and the radiation has less effect. Uh, but you're always more reliable when you use just plain old convection cooling. Fans can fail and uh, dirt can collect and clog things up. So generally the most reliable thing is convection cooling. Now you can, when you make your own heat sink or use a structural element or something as a heat sink or the, a metallic box that you're using as a heat sink, uh, you can figure this all out yourself by measuring uh, the ambient temperature and the temperature of the device you're cooling. Let's uh, look at a uh, data sheet. Uh, for a transistor. Normally uh, when you look at a data sheet uh, you're thinking about voltages and current ratings and things like that. But uh, let's just concentrate on the thermal aspects. And here it's telling us uh, the device can have a total power dissipation of 70 watts. We have a problem here because this chart shows a power dissipation of only 50 watts. So I would go with the more conservative rating. And uh, it's also telling us that, I'll, I'll notice that that rating is at a case temperature of 25 degrees C. So this 50 watts here is at 25 degrees C, case temperature. Then it's saying at an ambient temperature, it's good for 2 watts without a heat sink. And that's this bottom curve here. And over here is the power for that. So it's good for 2 watts at 25 degrees C with no heat sink. And then it's derated as the junction temperature goes up. Then here it's telling us the thermal resistance junction to case is 1.8 degrees C per watt. And the thermal resistance junction to ambient is 62.5 degrees C per watt. So at 2 watts uh, times the 62.5 degrees C per watt, we end up at 150 degrees. Now here's the uh, data sheet for a power MOSFET in the same TO220 package. And here it's telling us the uh, maximum power dissipation is 300 watts. And that would be with a heat sink and a linear derating factor of 2 watts per degree C. 
So I, I will plot that as a graph and show that to you here shortly. Now it's saying the maximum junction temperature is 175 degrees C. Then down here they're telling us the thermal resistance junction to case is 0 0.5 degrees C per watt. And this is a, a very important parameter, this next one. The thermal resistance case to heat sink, and that's assume it's smooth, flat, and greased, is also 0 0.5 degrees C per watt. And this is going to turn out to be a very important factor uh, when we look at uh, heat sink sizing. Then it's also saying the junction to ambient is 62 degrees C per watt, and that's like the other transistor uh, that we showed with a 2 degrees, or, or I'm sorry, 2 watt power dissipation capability without a heat sink. Here's a plot of the case temperature versus watts dissipated. Now that's the case temperature, not the heat sink temperature. And the data sheet told us that the thermal resistance between the case and the heat sink is a half a degree C per watt. And that means the heat sink has to be cooler than any temperature on this curve in order to get rid of the heat. Now with a thermal resistance from the case to the sink of a half a degree C per watt, when we're dissipating 100 watts, a heat sink has to be 50 degrees cooler than the allowable case temperature. So that's a very important factor. Now let's uh, look at a typical heat sink. Here's a typical heat sink for a TO220 device. And it looks like that on the end. In fact, this is a pretty big one. Uh, I don't, it's the largest one that I'm aware of that's made for a TO220. Here it's starting to look a little crowded, but what this line here is, is a one degree C per watt line. And uh, the heat sink that I just showed you at a thousand feet per minute air movement is good for one degree C per watt. So at the intersection here, uh, we can dissipate 75 watts with a heat sink, heat sink temperature of 100 degrees C. Now that this heat sink is only rated at 3.5 degrees C per watt uh, with normal convection. So in, in that case with uh, just normal convecting air the intersection is at 33 watts and 140 degrees C. So you can see where a 300 watt device is really only good for 33 watts when you uh, do all the uh, thermal considerations. If you were to use the complementary pair that I showed you earlier uh, where the collectors were not at the same voltage potential you might be tempted to insulate one of the transistors and use the same heat sink for both and uh, well here's a typical insulator for that very purpose and the data sheet says it has a thermal impedance of 1.13 degrees C inch squared per watt. 
Now earlier, we said that the TO-220 has an effective area of 0.12 square inches. So if we put that into this formula, we end up with 9.4 degrees C per watt. And uh, we saw what only a half a degree C per watt can do to a design. Now here's a TO220 transistor, and the only thing that counts is the metallic area. The plastic area does very little. And the uh, TO247 has about twice the metallic area as the TO220. So for it, uh, this insulating pad would be 4.7 degrees C per watt. So uh, this can greatly degrade the uh, heat conduction when uh, you want to insulate one of the devices from the heat sink. So generally, it's better to use two heat sinks. There are many brands of uh, heat sink compound, and uh, some come in tubes and some come in little jars. And uh, the temptation is to use too much of, of this stuff. So let me show you how to apply it. Now we're going to mount this device on this heat sink. So what we want to do is apply a little bit of the compound and then with something like a business card we want to spread it around and then wipe the majority of it off and we want to do that same thing to the heat sink doesn't take very much We'll spread it around and then wipe most of it off. Then we push down on the device and move it around to squish out as much grease as possible. This is messy work, I know. But you see the device is now held in place very well by the uh, adhesion of the grease. Now we can wipe off the excess later after we screw the device down. By the way, the, uh, the device itself will take a number six screw, but the uh, commercial heat sinks uh, need a three millimeter screw or a number four uh, screw. The hole is just not quite big enough in those for a number six screw. So the next thing we're going to do is mount this and we're going to put a thermocouple between the head of the screw and the transistor so that we can monitor the case temperature. Okay, here's our device mounted, and we have a thermocouple under the screw holding the device down. Now, I like to use this number 30 uh, thermocouple wire. This is type J, and uh, that way the, the fatter wires will actually conduct heat away. So this is a very thin wire. You can get it into tight places. And this would plug into the thermocouple meter. Now on a 247, TO247 device, uh, you can't do that under the screw head because it's plastic. But here you can see exposed a little bit of the base plate on either side. So what I would do is hold the thermocouple 
in place there and then put some uh, RTV or silicone adhesive to hold it in place to do a, uh, a heat run. If you watched the full video up till now, uh, you should easily be able to tell that the readings on the data sheets are gross exaggerations. And you really got to know what you're doing to uh, cool these devices uh, to get any useful uh, bit of uh, heat capability out of them. Uh, the same things apply to the resistors on the left, uh, the same heat sinking rules as uh, to the electronic devices on the right. So uh, use uh, your new knowledge wisely and keep them things cool. If uh, you got anything out of that video, uh, you could help me by clicking that uh, like button. And if you don't want to miss the uh, next video, be sure and subscribe. And in the meantime, you could watch these two videos.